Hi, I'm Narid Ansari and in this video we're going to talk about Ribbon Renderer in Niagara System and Niagara Emitter and with that we will talk about Niagara Materials as well and along the way we will create this effect and put it in our game and I will show you how you can do that a step by step from scratch in detail so without any further ado, let's begin so for that let's just create a new emitter right click and in here click on FX Niagara Emitter and I want to create a new emitter, click next and in here I want an empty emitter okay so click finished and i want to call it ne4 niagara emitter and i want to call it strike okay or whatever you want to call it i will clean up click on it to open it let's just dock it over here right now there is nothing in it and it uses sprite render if you haven't watched my playlist of videos about niagara and just watch those you will learn a lot we want to use all of those knowledge about parameters about curves to create this cool effect right so first of all i want to show you how you can use the ribbon renderer right so for that let's just delete this sprite renderer and let's just pause this and in here click on this plus side and this what this time we want to use the ribbon renderer okay click on it and note the ribbon renderer here at default it doesn't have any material so we should create a material for our niagara system okay i have a full playlist of material how you can create the material and you can watch those and in all of the unreal engine tools you need to know about materials materials is important in unreal engine 5 right so in niagara system we should know about materials as well so let's just create a material right click in here and choose a material and in here i want to call it m a strike okay or whatever you want to call it i'll click on it to open it and the most important things to use the material for niagara system is to add particle color okay the most important thing in here if you don't put this particle color for your material it won't work right so always create a particle material node in here particle color node in here and click on your material in here change the blend mode to translucent mask or additive additive okay and with that we have access to emissive color and opacity the most important things in Niagara material right so it's easy you can just plug this particle color the red and green and blue channel to emissive color okay and with that we can change the emissive color of our particles in Niagara system okay and we need an alpha as well okay we can just connect the alpha of this particle color to opacity and that's how you can have a Niagara material. So now we can use this material in our Niagara system. You just need particle color. And Niagara system will use this particle color node to change the color of our particles and the alpha of that, okay? But I don't want it to leave it like this. I wanna change something in here. I wanna use texture coordinate and with that if you expand this you can see the preview of that okay so for example if i just unlink this with holding alt and click on this and connect this to the base color and let's just change this to plain you can see it it, it will give us this gradient color in here like this okay and what i want to do i want to just use red channel so we can say mask component okay component mask and in here if you click on it you can mask whatever channel you want in this time i want to mask r because i need just the r okay so with that if you connect it to input of our mask and output of it to base color it will give us this gradient here okay that is the start from zero in here and white in here that is look like this and you can see it clearly okay and we can use that in our niagara system but before doing that i want to i want to this opacity of zero to start from here and i want to just uh, rotate it 180 degree and i can do that with one minus okay we did talk about all of this node in playlist of videos about material so if we connect this to here now you can see it to start from here the opacity of here is zero and in here is one okay now that we have this because in niagara system we use this particle color to to change things in our material we should multiply the alpha of this particle color to our gradient that we create in here okay so let's just connect this to this we multiply these two together and now we can connect it to opacity we don't need to connect it to base color and we use this rgb color on our emissive color and we connect it to the emissive color when we overdrive our color in our niagara system it will it will glow light just watch my videos about materials there is a playlist of videos about material so now that our material is ready we can save it and use it in our niagara system right 
So no, let's just go to our emitter and in here select our material that we just create and after that destroy it, okay? This was the one that we created, okay? We don't need to do anything in here, let's just the shader be compile and right off the bat you can see there is nothing here because we are using ribbon renderer there are some things that we should add to this emitter and i will show you a step by step what those are first of all let's just click on emitter state and change it to self okay because we want to override it right we don't want to use the system a lifetime and all of that and this option i think it's cool it will complete let particle finish then kill the emitter and for loop behavior we choose infinite it is at default right and the loop duration i want it to be one second because our strike it's like 0 0.1 second right so let's just leave the loop direction to one second next the, the most important thing in here if you click on here you should search for beam emitter setup okay and what this beam emitter setup do for us it will set up our ribbon renderer or over beam right so always we should have this beam emitter setup and it will give you and beam start and beam end and you can see at the beam start it use a simulation position at the middle right Zero 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 so this simulation position that at the default it will add it add to the beam start it it is on the parameters okay and it's like telling zero 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 of course we could ch just change it to a vector but let's just leave it at that and you can with this beam beam emitter setup you can choose the start position and a stop position and or end position of our ribbon renderer or over beam right so let's just change this value for example it will start from zero 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 and after that we can put 800 for the x okay right now nothing happened in our preview because we didn't spawn any particle or over a meter okay so let's just do that if you click in here we can just use a spawn burst instantaneous okay click on it and change the B a spawn count to for example 20 and we again nothing happened because we didn't um, set up all the uh, particles particle update and all of that we should go to particle spawn and spawn our particles right so click in here search for a spawn beam okay and with that you can see it here it's too small we can see it clearly right so it doesn't have any input for this spawn beam but you always should put this in particle spawn so it will work in here we say spawn burst instantaneous and when we say spawn beam it will spawn that beam right so we need to add and something else because you can see the width of this beam is a lot small so let's just add another thing just search for beam and you can see it gives us two options one of them is for a spawn beam that that we added and one of them is beam width and this beam width it should be below the spawn beam right so now you can see our beam is here now if we go to beam emitter setup we can change the beam end to for example 100 and now you can see our beam in here okay and if it's not on the focus like this if you click on preview hit f it will bring it on focus and you can see our beam you remember we add a material in here that the start opacity is one at the end opacity is zero and you can see in here the opacity in here is one and at the end it is zero right so again let me show you another thing in here if you go to a spawn burst instance instantaneous in here you can see a spawn count is 20 what this means it means this beam in here is like 20 segment okay and we can play with that we can add loss to that and we can have gravity on them but we don't want to do that so let's just go to beam width what i want to change in here i want to change this beam width to to a curve but before doing that let's just increase it to show you how it's worth 100 and you can see it clearly let's just put it at that and in here click in here and i want to say float from curve and now you can see it use normalized age but i don't want to do that because it's not working as a, a sprite renderer it's a ribbon renderer and if you want to change the width of this ribbon renderer you can't use normalized age okay because we use the spawn burst instantaneous and it will create all of the particle at the same time and if uh, at the beginning of the age it will be created so if we use normalized age we can't do nothing to this beam width 
So what we can do about that? When you add a ribbon renderer in here, it will add some parameters to our system, our emitter attribute in here, some to particle attribute in here, and the most important one for this beam width is this ribbon link order. So you know that this beam is collection of, let me see, 20 particles that is linked together to create our beam, right? So in this beam width curve, instead of just using normalized age, we should use ribbon link order. So if you put it in here, if you don't know what I'm doing, just watch my video about curves in Niagara system. I did talk about it like 15 minutes and I did show you a lot of things and break down all of these things that we are doing right now and you can learn a lot from that. And what I want to do, I want to just first of all change the scale curve to something like 10, okay? And you can see at the first keyframe, at the second zero, it is 1, okay? So it will be multiplied by this scale curve that is 10. So you can see the width of this start is 10, and at the end it is 0, and you can see it, it goes to 0. But I don't want to do that. Let's just use some of these templates like this, and you can see it's out of focus. So click on this curve, hit F, and you can see it clearly. And you can see it, whatever shape you put in here, it will be here as well okay so let's just change it to something i, I want to change the position of this middle keyframe to something like 0.9 okay and now you can see it clearly okay it's like a beam it's beautiful right next if you go to initialize particle in here we can change the color as well at default it's unset but we can set it right so let's just change that to something like blue and now you can see it here of course we could just click on it because we create our material and our particle let me show you our particle color rgb of that is connected to emissive color so if you overdrive this uh, color picker in here in our Niagara emitter it will glow light right so let's just change that the red I want to be zero the blue I want to be zero no the the green I want to be zero and the blue I wanted to overdrive it by a thousand right and now you can see it glow light right so everything is working fine because we connect that particle color to emissive color right so we have a emissive beam next thing to do let's just go to this beam uh, beam emitter setup and change the position a little bit more so it will be bigger okay if it's out of focus if you hit F you can see it clearly we can zoom and like this and you can see it clearly we can make it a lot bigger and you can see it's look and we can see it even right because it's big and from the far we can see it clearly so let's just put 800 in here so we can see it at f on your preview so you can see it clearly we need to increase the width and you know it if you go to beam width you can change the scale curve to something like 50 and now you can see it from the far as well okay so everything is cool we can add some motion to it but let's just change this uh, beam width curve to again one of these template hit f on your curve so you can see it clearly because our strike at the start and at the end it is zero i don't want it to be zero so let's just click on it and put point one in here just watch my videos about curves in niagara system and you will learn a lot point one and no i think it's better or if you yeah we can just put it at point two right but it is it is okay so know that our beam is okay let's just add some curve to it and if you go to beam emitter setup there is a tool to add curve to it so if you go to a beam emitter setup click on this use beam tangent okay and now in here we have a curve and we can change that curve as well so let's just add a curve for ourselves i want to change this to vector from float okay so if we increase or decrease this you can see it clearly and the beam and tangent we can do that as well we can use whatever of these that we want okay so again let's just use vector from float and now you can see we can create this cool curve now that we have our curve we could just randomize it okay so let's just randomize it random just search for random range from float and you can see we can add a randomize in here just search for random range float okay zero to one is okay and you can see it stacking up of each other why because if we go to initial particle you can see it's the lifetime is five seconds we don't want that we don't want to do that let's just put it at one and you can see each time it has another curve because we use random from float right so you can see it it's cool now let's just add some motion event to this and for that we can just go to particle update and in here search for noise jitter curl noise or whatever but, but I don't, in this case i want to use jitter position okay and it will change its position and you can see it it's cool right so let's just change this make it a little more like this 
like 10 okay and i think that's cool we could just go to this spawn burst instance inst instantaneous and change the number of segment for over beam but i think it's cool but you can change it in here as well and you can see it get messy if you increase it so 15 i think it's okay uh, next thing that I'm gonna do in this particle update, I want to change the life of our beam in here. And how we can do that? Of course, we can just change uh, the life of our particle, this lifetime uh, attribute or parameter in here. We can just drag and drop it to our particle update. And with that, we can set it. So let's just set it for 0.1. And now you can see it's more like a, a strike, right? Because we set the lifetime at this. We could just use a random range float from for example 0.1 to 0.3 for example and each time it will give it a another value right so we have this but i think we should increase this jitter amount to 20 for example so i think that's cool right so let's just save this and if you go to content drawer you can see we have our beam in here right click on it and create a niagara system off of that and with this niagara beam system that we create from this niagara emitter we can go to our scene and you can see our scene is bright let's just uh, disable all the light okay like this and no we don't have a lot of light of course this there are some light but let's just leave it as at that and no let's just add over beam in here okay and no let's just play and no let me show you you can see it's cool right so if we hit g on our keyboard you know we can just see the over beam effect in here it is cool right we can create as much as we want let's just bring some other some more and hit g so you get rid of all of those icons and now you can see we have this cool effect for over beam so for example for changing the color of this beam we can just open up the our system okay and in our system if you click on this emitter we could just go to particles parameter in here and set the color in here for example okay and let's just change the color i want to overdrive the red part like a thousand and all of others i want to be zero head f in our preview so we can see it clearly you can see it now if we go to save it and go to our scene now if we add our system in here now you can see this one is red hit g so we can see it clearly we can always increase the amount of jitter in here to 30 for example and don't forget to save it and we know we have more jitter in here right we could just randomize everything in here for example this tangent in here but i leave it for you to change that i hope you like this video and please 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 if you want to help me hit that like button and subscribe to my channel it's my honor to have you here thank you very much for watching bye